Hello everyone, my name is Saurav Gurk and I'm going to talk about our recent research paper, SIGNET, Learning Descriptors for Sequence-Based Hierarchical Place Recognition, which has been published in IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters and is being currently presented at IEEE International Conference on Robotics and Automation, ECRA 2021. This work was done in collaboration with Michael Milford at QT Center for Robotics in Brisbane in Australia. This research is about visual localization, where we try to answer the question, where am I? So given a map of an environment, a robot has to find its location or its orientation with respect to that given reference map. And this is one of the key capabilities for a mobile robot so that it can then easily navigate. Visual place recognition is one of the ways of performing visual localization. By looking at an image from a particular place, which one has already seen, one can recognize that place. And this is what visual place recognition does. For example, this image captured from Queensland University of Technology, I can immediately look at it and tell where am I. And this is one of the ways of telling your location with respect to a given map. A typical visual place recognition pipeline is like this. The map of the environment is defined in terms of a collection of images. So these images are captured by a robot when it, for the very first time, traverses a particular environment. Now, given another query image, which is captured from a revisit of that environment, one has to first do data representation. That is, for any given query image or any image in the reference database, key points as local features or global descriptors have to be defined so that an image can be represented. Once this image representation is done, then data association happens. That is, we match the query image with the images in the reference database to find its closest matching image with which then it is decided whether it is a known place, that is a revisited place or a new place. Some of the key aspects of visual place recognition are listed here. Two of the main challenges for visual place recognition are viewpoint invariance and appearance invariance. And most of the methods which have been developed in literature, they look at different novel ways of representing or associating different representations of places. And this can also be done by using additional modalities, for example, use of sequential information, which is inherent within the task of robotics, using more sensing devices, additional information in terms of depth or 3D, or using visual semantics. Visual place recognition literature is growing quite rapidly. And to get an idea of where this current research is at and what are the key challenges of this research, you can have a look at our recent literature review of visual place recognition published in HKI survey track this year. There exist a number of methods for visual place recognition. Some of the methods which are related to this particular research that is involving sequence-based imagery, I'll go through those in brief. So one of the oldest methods in that is six lamb. So in six lamb, a distance matrix is constructed where rows represent different database images and columns represent different query images. And the task is to find matching places along the diagonal of this matrix. Now there are some challenges with this approach. First thing is to represent the underlying places, the single images as a single point in this matrix in a robust manner, and then dealing with the velocity sensitivity problem. And there exist several methods which have uh, followed after this particular work and improved this particular approach. One of the ways to deal with velocity sensitivity is to use odometry information or GPS information so that different consecutive frames can be subsampled so that their frame separation is constant or uniform. While the earlier methods for visual place recognition based on sequences mainly focused on sequence score aggregation given a distance matrix. There also exist methods, for example, delta descriptors, which is one of our previous works, where given a sequence of images, a sequential descriptor is instead created. And then it could be matched within the same distance matrix based formulation. Another similar approach is used in the past where authors have used different models for uh, creating these temporal descriptors. And there's been an increasing amount of work in, a, in the same direction. 
So as also mentioned earlier, most of the past research has mainly focused on aggregating scores over the distance metrics, which is constructed by single image based descriptor similarity. And this research focuses on sequence based spatiotemporal descriptors, which I learned end to end using contrastive learning. And that guides the sequential score aggregation, which gives us a hierarchical place recognition approach. Here's an overview of our proposed method. So given a database of daytime images, which are represented by a sequence of five images per place and one descriptor representing one particular image, we use Signet to create a single sequential descriptor from a sequence of five images. And once this sequential descriptor is obtained, this can be used to find the top matching candidates from the reference database. And these top matching candidates are then refined by doing a single image based sequence score aggregation to find the final correct match. One of the main components of this research is contrastive learning. And we use max margin based triplet loss. We define an anchor and positive as images belonging to the same place and negatives being the images from far off geographical locations. And the task is to maximize the margin between the anchor positive distance and the anchor negative distance. One particular difference in our approach is that we use sequence of images rather than using single images to define the contrastive loss. And in this case, given a sequence of images, a single sequential descriptor is constructed and that sequential descriptor is compared in the latent space to define the anchor positive and anchor negative distances. The second main component of this research is 1D temporal convolutions. Here, because we assume that for any given image, we already have a single image descriptor available. So we only focus on learning temporal dynamics of that particular sequence. And similar to 2D convolutions, for 1D temporal convolutions, a 1D vector, a 1D filter size of three here strides along the temporal dimension to generate an output descriptor, which looks into the temporal relationships within that local window. I will now go through our proposed method in a lot more detail and look at these components uh, within this diagram one by one. So given an input sequence of RGB images, we first do global descriptor extraction, which is an offline process where for each given image, a D-dimensional descriptor is generated. And this process is done independently for every given image. So now considering a sequence of images where given these five descriptors, we then run this through a temporal convolution network where we only use a single convolutional layer where a filter size of three is strided across the time axis and then sequential average pooling is done, finally followed by L2 normalization to get a single sequential descriptor. So this sequential descriptor comprises information of all the images within that sequence. The same process is followed for the reference database where for any given location, a sequence of five centered at that location is used to generate that sequential descriptor. So these sequential descriptors represented here as yellow solid rectangles are matched using Euclidean distance to get top matching candidates. In parallel to that process, the individual single image descriptors are also processed to fine tune them to that particular data set so that a day versus night robustness is achieved at single image level. Here, the same signet network is used, but with the filter size of one, which means that individual elements will be treated individually independently to generate individual independent single descriptors, but fine tuned for that particular data set. This set of refined single image descriptors are used to do sequence code aggregation. But this is only done for the top matching candidates, which were retrieved from the matching of sequential descriptors. So for any given pair of these top matching candidates, we then do sequence score aggregation by constructing a five cross five distance matrix and then summing the distance across the diagonal of this matrix. 
and the location for which the lowest score is obtained is deemed as the final match. To benchmark our proposed method, we used four challenging publicly available datasets, each having individual characteristics in terms of changing appearance conditions or viewpoint conditions. So this could be day versus night or summer versus winter, and also testing generalization across different cities. Before looking at the results graphs, I'll explain this legend. Here, HVPR refers to our proposed approach where sequential descriptors guide the single image based sequence code aggregation. We include the sequential descriptor results, the single image based results, and results corresponding to sequence code aggregation over single images, which is not guided by any sequential descriptor. We also include a few other baselines. Here, raw refers to the input descriptors, the global descriptors, which are used to define all these methods. And for raw single descriptors, for example, in this case, NetWheelArt, sequence match, uh, that is sequence code aggregation performed on top of that, and delta descriptors and smoothing defined on top of the same descriptor. So delta and smoothing are again sequential descriptors. These results correspond to day versus night visual place recognition. Here we consider two data sets, Oxford and Bispin, where models trained on one city are tested on the other one. We consider two different scenarios for Oxford dataset. One is fixed time, that is, frames are subsampled by taking every kth frame, and fixed distance, where frames are subsampled so that for a given consecutive frames, the separation is, let's say, two meters. Overall, we can observe that methods based on SIGNEP and hierarchical visual place recognition typically achieve superior performance. And some of the methods, for example, smoothing and delta do not get uh, much of a performance gain, which could, be be, which could be because of the fact that they typically require a longer sequence or are simply not robust enough. These results correspond to seasonal variations. Here we tested that a model trained for summer versus winter is able to generalize for spring versus fall conditions and we were able to achieve significantly superior performance in this scenario. Here, the MSLS dataset, Mapillary Street Level Sequences, uh, we used their validation set and we trained model only on the Melbourne dataset. And we can observe that, again, there is a performance jump, but the performance margin is not huge. And we believe this is because of the fact that since we're not training models end-to-end, -end, as in the image encoder is not uh, trained. Uh, this could be a bottleneck for challenging data sets where single image performance itself is very low. We also compared our method against existing state-of-the-art methods, including single image descriptors, sequential descriptors, existing sequential score aggregation techniques, uh, especially those based on graph-based sequence matching or graph-based uh, hashing techniques. And in all these cases, we found that our method typically achieves superior performance. And the cases where it lacks uh, good performance is typically due to a low performing single image descriptor. Since we use a hierarchical approach, one of the main advantages of this method is that we don't have to do sequence score aggregation densely across the whole distance metrics. And this gives us significant computational gains. There are additional results uh, which can be found in the supplementary material, which are based on how varying sequence length can generate uh, still better results in the state of the art and using a different underlying single image descriptor. The TSNA visualizations here show that the signet descriptors form a different pattern in the latent space as compared to delta descriptors or smoother descriptors or even the single image descriptors. So to conclude, sequential imagery can be utilized in various ways as a sequential descriptor, as a math code aggregator, or a hierarchical combination. And learning sequential descriptors over short sequences not only reduces latency or compute time, but it is also more informative than an independent collection of single descriptors, thus increasing the recall performance. In future, we'll focus on end-to-end -end learning and improve robustness of single descriptors, maybe by large scale training or for further generalization. To look at the source code of this research, uh, you can go to the GitHub page through this QR code or connect with me on social media. Thank you.